Celebration 84, a presentation of the Sea Alaska Heritage Foundation. Statewide distribution of Celebration 84 is provided by the Learn Alaska Network. Welcome to Celebration 84. It's a historic gathering of the Clinkett, Haida, and Simpson nations, and it's happening right here at Centennial Hall in Juneau. I'm Marla Williams, and with me tonight as my co-anchor is uh, Tom Jackson from Cake. Tom, kind of what's the feel going on here? Well, I, I, I'd say that uh, the feeling has been very, very good and exciting for everyone because it seems like it is now has built itself up to the crescendo for the night. Tom, um, tell me uh, about some of the places where people have, have come from. I hear they've come from even as far away as Hawaii. That's right. Yes, they came from Hawaii and some from up north and Seattle. And uh, I guess there's a group here also, a few of them from uh, Oklahoma. So that is quite a distance. There are a lot of people here this evening. There are, uh, as a matter of fact, at one point, I think it was about 800 people at the hall one night, um, mm -hmm. all getting together and dancing. And uh, in the thick of things, we have Rosemary Alexander and Dr. Walter Soboloff. Uh, Rosie, how are things going down there on the floor? We're getting ready for the Simpson Nation dancers to perform very shortly. She said, I have Dr. Walter Soboloff with us here, who is uh, well known at being able to interpret many of the things that are going on here. Uh, Dr. Soboloff, the Simpsons are from Metlakatla, but there are also many, many Juno people. Can you explain what we're about to see? Yes, uh, a major portion of the group that are being televised tonight are residents of Juneau working in the city and Thank probably you. some have chosen to retire in Juneau and, and yet the their feeling for their culture is so intense that they're right in it. I noticed just a few minutes ago as they were getting started there was a pulling Thank of feathers and the flying of feathers around the stage. Any idea and about that? Now? Like oh yes, they used the they used they used the feathers, in this case they used the, the down the from the swan, the rather very, very, very choice, very hard, symbolic of good feeling, of stand. peace, of so love. And instead of shaking much, hands, Louise. they scattered the down, which when it falls to the ground, it falls so gently, people say you don't feel when it falls. <laughs> God bless each and every one of you. I have a question for Okay, we're into the Simpsons now. When we come back, um, let's talk a little bit about, about what it means to be. My children, my whole family. And I would, at this time, I would like to invite her. She is Haida. And uh, her, dear, her dear husband is Clinkett, for Stewart and Grace. I would like you to come up and dance with us, please. It's not, it wouldn't be right if I didn't invite my mother and father in Christ. Thank you. Um, I'll go some guitar one and get hand.
Well, the Simpsons certainly put on quite a performance for us this evening. They came, um, I think it, the Simpsons were um, from uh, not only Juno, but from um, Met La Catla as well here this evening. Um, I want to mention again to our viewers that tonight you're going to see a group perform from the Hawaiian nation. And uh, if you're a little surprised, don't be, because they too are trying to preserve their culture, which is fast slipping away from them. Uh, Tom, you know, one of the things that stands out in the native culture is the narkani. Can you explain to me that, that term? Yes. Uh, uh, narkani means tribal brother-in-laws. Now, in this program that we have, Patty Paul and I are both eagles. And uh, Dr. Sobolo and Cyril George, they are both ravens. So they even did, even did up so there's two on each side, and these uh, Nakani are the mouthpieces of their tribes. They're sort of the spokesmen. That's right. That's right. Tribes. Um, the Simshians are only one group. There are several groups, aren't there, coming up? That's right. There, there are about uh, two, three distinct groups by themselves. <laughs> Usually each town or village has what you call a brother-in-law, which we call the Nakani. And whenever these dancers perform, he would be the first person to come in ahead of all the rest of the dancers with his back toward the audience so that they can see that he is their Nakani. families have their own uh, artifacts that they take care of for their younger generation. And if we take one up from the storage box, they want to know our grandchildren, my grandchildren want to know what the design means and how it pertains to us. And so I have to explain everything, why we have those and why we're supposed to treasure it. that connect the islands of Southeast Alaska. Our songs and dances tie us together, uniting the Tlingit, Haida, and Simsian nations. The retelling of the stories with song, teaching, the dances is sometimes very difficult. The one who does it very well is Amy Marvin of Huna. <laughs> And the words of this song is, uh, do you know that the world is turning every, and, and that it's no use to tell the truth at times. <laughs> and the second verse is, the whole, the whole, uh, my grandfather's uh, land, it, it flipped over with me. Which of the wolves will try to steer me uh, in the right direction? Yeah. 
the song, that's why we are house pick it. As it makes some of us feel real great when we sing it. The respect for our she's the daughter of Dr. Tan right here. And uh, when they compose songs like that, it's from their hearts to show their love for her. And she feels it when she's dancing. That's why she's so happy when she does the dancing. I want to thank the Lord for allowing us to get The world views held by each of the three the nations, nations are again. quite distinct, and but the nations share a common concern the for the preservation of their cultures. Reggie D'Angeli of the Simsians was the first to welcome the three nations. Unlike the Tlingkids and Haidas, the Simsians speak in three distinct dialects. Mr. D'Angeli is speaking in the Nass River dialect. Samogit, Samiyat, Sigramanak. The Wam Kavarum will look at hooks and will look side garden. Get a guns, hide a bucket, Alaska. Need if that will a hooks come celebration eighty two. So my low arm garden will look hooks come will me look hide and get a guns. In the some little little mam garden, escape and grandchildren. The Hihox Kamul special occasion, Kun. We are honored to participate in this great occasion again. Uh, this great gathering of the three nations. We, were, we participated in 82, the first one, and we never forgot that. We met our old friends at that time. We, done da we were glad that we done dancing and singing with the our brothers of the Haida and Tlingit Nation. We are very proud to attend this great gathering again. I want to thank all the chiefs and the ladies. We call the chief Samogit. And the ladies, Sigidamanak. And we're very, very honored to stand on the stage to represent our nation the great chiefs of the Trinket and the Haidas. And in closing, I want to thank the Lord for allowing us to gather one more time of the three nations again. And it will give us, we are very honored to witness the dancing and singing for the next three days. So in closing, I say, Gunachis, Hawa, Lukulam. Thank you. How are they? How long last years? Long and kill long. I to Atlan go down, lad, dance, long aging. Atlan, I see. I can at least go to night long. Can law aging, can law aging. Who should not see good goose can scat us. A day so commit school and scan on. I'd like to express my sincere thanks for the opportunity to thank you for, in behalf of the Haidas uh, that are here. And we are very thankful that uh, we could be a part of the celebration tonight. The Haidas came out of the Eunuch River in the old days and the Tlingit, some of them came out through the Nash River drainage. That was before the Samsian, before the Samsians came out. But they were known to coexist. And that's the way I've seen it all along in my days, that the Tlingits and the Haidas have coexisted. And so there was a lot of intermarriages. And so you find a lot of Haidas up here, and you find Tlingits down in our district. And it's not unusual.
This is the time we got a chance to push them forward and talk with them, tell the story, old story, I think it knows it. But we are bashful to talk to our grandchildren, to our children, to our friends. So we lost everything now. But I'm glad that it starts right now. Us older people, we have to talk with our children, our grandchildren. All the people from different places, they came here. So I got a chance to talk to them to learn. We tried to bring the younger, when the ones growing, they're already just as big as I am. They can talk, I think it. And they don't know what to do. They've been walking around, so they go to town. So they get lost, right? They start drinking and using those. So this is what it needs to be done from our people. It means a lot to me because I've seen a lot of younger people that can't speak their own language. And to me, this gives me an opportunity to speak my language and sing and dance with the elders and learn some new points that I don't know and continue the heritage of the Clinket language and songs and dances. I'd call it the programs that are the, uh, that have been put on through Saudis and Alaska concerning our tribal heritage and all those things. I think the people of the younger generation have taken a lot of interest in it. I am glad to see that because at one time it was almost a lost cause. Now we are back of what our fathers used to do and what our fathers, forefathers stood for. This is my first year here and it's getting, I like it here and my grandparents are here and we're just helping them out dancing and helping my uncles, my other relatives out here. We believe that uh, our younger people should uh, see what is being taught from the different communities and how much effort is being put into uh, trying to teach our young ones. And uh, Heather here has been in a dance group for the past three years. One person said, why do they have to hang on to their culture? I don't, I don't approve of what this man said. He was a lawyer. And uh, I see this. Every nationality have their way of life, the way they bury their people the way they meet people, the way they talk to people. All right, so we natives of Alaska, when we get together, we have to tell one another how we came about, where we live, and what we belong to, whether we are an eagle or a raven.
bring the Kaguantan Yachi to my bosom. And it's Achudechawe Kokhlechas Achwakhimi. My tears of joy, my tears of happiness, not my perspiration, my tears, <laughs> will fall upon the Kaguantan Yachi that I love so dearly. And then I believe the other part says, Tlaku Kwanki. At was Kuru Ayachnai Sene de Shangu Kedi Yatki. The sayings and the wisdom of the elders. Do it right. performers cleared the stage for a memorial service honoring late Governor William Egan. As a public servant, Bill Egan was unsurpassed. And I'm proud to have known both Bill Egan the man and Bill Egan the public servant. As a man, Bill Egan knew many hardships. The loss of his father to a landslide, the loss of his hometown to a great earthquake, and the suffering of physical pain. But as a man, Bill Egan also knew much happiness. I can remember uh, the second time that I met Bill Egan. He shook my hand and said, hi, Bill. How's the wife and kids? I remember <laughs> how proud I was. I could hardly wait to get home to tell the governor of Alaska remembered who I was, and I was nobody. I remember that. I remember the day when he called up on the telephone in kind of a whispery voice, if you remember. And he says, hi, this is, uh, this is Bill Egan. I got a little job for you. I'd like to have you do something for me. Could you do that for me? Could, I want you to, to serve the state. What pride I had. Here was a man that trusted in me to do something for the state. I was going to do that. And then I can remember annually we'd, we'd meet at, a, at a, a gathering of people and the last holiday season uh, we were both sitting there together at this place and crowd of people around. And we were sitting on a couch, both of us indulgently watching our respective grandchildren playing together. <laughs> and uh, we'd just pass the time of day and he'd say, hmm, how's everything going? Hmm, everything all right? Hmm, 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 hmm. We talked and it got time to leave. And we stood up and as men will do sometimes, we kind of clumsily pawed each other's shoulders and hugged each other's arms and uh, saying goodbye, and I can remember him saying, uh, see you, see you. And thinking back on that moment, I can remember that I wanted to tell him right then how much it pleased me that he was my friend. I sure wish I had a We are honored to join with the many people of the state of Alaska this eighth day of May, 1984, who are paying memorial tribute to our late Governor Bill Egan. Both Chilkat Indian Village and the Kakwantan tribe, into which we adopted Bill Egan, will have found memories of Governor Bill Egan. We Tlingits have no word for goodbye. We say 
meaning courage, we will see one another again. We believe this is, was Bill's promise also to his family, to his church, and to countless friends upon the face of this earth. Just as members of Bill Egan will give strength to his family and friends that live on, the memories being shared at Celebration 84 will give the Tlingit, Haida, and Simsian people strength for the future. The person I'm about to introduce you to has um, been a pioneer in the effort to bridge the large generation gap in Hawaii. You know, the Hawaiian language is... Um, is uh, severely threatened with extinction. All of our native speakers are those 70 years of age and older. And so, um, Mama Hale, as we call her very affectionately, has been the first to begin a preschool Hawaiian language. And it's a very exciting project that she's been working on. And in addition to, to her great interest and affection for young people, for youngsters, she is a person of many, many talents, as you shall see shortly. Is there a request? Beyond the reef? All oh, right. There's a young, this Don here. <laughs> Don, are you here, Don? He can sing it in. There he is. My, Don, come here.
We'll sing it in English, and he's going to sing it in his native tongue. <laughs> he's my neighbor. He just moved next door to me. I know the custom here, but in Hawaii, this is the Hawaiian way, you meet everyone with a holy kiss. Mine is really holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y. <laughs> okay, I sing it in English, and you sing in fish. Beyond the reef, where the sea is dark and cold. My lover's gone, and my dreams grow old. There'll be no tears, there'll be no tears. Will he remember me? and flowers when the trade winds blow I'll send my lonely heart for I love him so someday I know you'll come back again to me till then my heart will be Traditional songs and dances are not the only way we pass our, our histories. In this performance by the Deshu players of Haines, the traditional raven legend of creation is told in a modern drama. We pick up the story with the birth of the raven child. Bring that down. Put it in the place of the first. They went to get moss from the trees. They put it down for her. She finally gave birth. It is Raven's child, little Raven. That is why people long time ago used moss for their babies. Now we use diapers. But long ago people used moss even in the baby's scary basket. The story of Christ's birth runs parallel to our story. We all the Jesus Off stage, others are working to preserve the native culture by applying computer technology. We are predicted to be 
dead by 2020, linguistically and culturally. Well, the reason why I say culturally is because when you lose the language, then the base for the culture is gone. And so uh, we cope with it by trying to, uh, I know it's freezing it in time, but it's one way of uh, keeping what we have right now. We're developing uh, materials for anyone who wants to learn how to speak Tlingit or learn about the culture, the resource materials. We're taking actual uh, literature materials that are spoken orally and then putting them into writing in Tlingit and then translate it and then annotate it and also glossaries when we can. Right now we're at the stage of nouns and then storytelling, uh, kinship terms. Uh, you can play with the computer and it will actually tell you what relationship it is to you. Like, uh, for example, we have Kakta. This is your paternal aunt and uh, my name is Kakta, which is apple mother. <laughs> Stuff like that. And, uh, this is a little program that's uh, combining uh, animation and uh, you can see the Tlingit uh, words of a raven dance. That's a little raven uh, doing its dance and there are words for this song are appearing above it. This was created by creating a bunch of different little poses and then just showing them in sequence. And. Uh, Dick and Nora have it at the foundation a number of uh, uh, junior high and high school students working with them creating uh, these kinds of uh, activities, the animation and the graphics and also other um, language learning activities. This is not to take the place of, uh, of a human being who is actually teaching the young people how to uh, how to sing and how to dance, but it's a reminder to keep it going. And it's through satellite technology that this program is being brought to you live by KTOO TV in Juneau. Celebration 84, a presentation of the Sea Alaska Heritage Foundation. Statewide distribution of Celebration 84 is provided by the Learn Alaska Network. We're back here live now at Celebration 84, and with me is Dr. Walker Sobolov and David Katzik, who is president of the Sea Alaska Heritage Foundation. I think we should talk just a minute, Dr. Sobolov and David, a little bit, bit about what all of this means. Well, um, the thing that it really means uh, to us as uh, people this evening is that it's a uh, family gathering for the Tlingits, Haidas, and Simsians and enjoying one another's company of fellowship and uh, encouraging one another to continue to promote our culture and our heritage uh, for our younger generations and for the current generation. Dr. Sobolov, as an elder, this is probably extremely important to you. Yes, uh, it, can, it can be very important uh, in that in previous times, well, the first uh, celebration, 82, was uh, funded a great deal by, by Sea Alaska, and uh, this celebration isn't, isn't funded as well. So it, it makes me say that we're not buying a heritage or we're not paying for a heritage they're doing this because it's theirs and I think I think it's just a blessing in disguise that that we're not funding so much of this from Sea Alaska Corporation for the sake of funding this thing and the thing going on it it gives it a different flavor right now we have a very exciting flavor from the stage we have the Haida Nation dancers and I think we should go to the Haida Nation dancers on camera and have the two of you explain some of the dance that they are doing. 
the, uh, the, the Tlingit nation and the Haida nation have overlapping interests in, in the world of nature by singing about the raven. And in the Tlingit world, as we sing about the raven, we, we do it with delight, with humor, and the same exists for the Haida folk. They, they have a lot of fun singing about the raven, and it gives them much pleasure. Uh, two significant things that occurred during this particular gathering of the Tlingits and Haidas and Simsians uh, is that one, first of all, the Haidas were, it appeared like the Haidas weren't going to be able to make it here to the celebration. And some of these people that are dancing here are from the Haida nation within the community of, the, of Juneau and some from Masset and other came for this particular event on their own occasion and they practiced very briefly to, to be ready for this um, celebration. The Simsians that were on a little bit earlier relatively did the same thing. Metlakatla was supposed to be up here. They weren't able to make it for various reasons. And the uh, Simsian people came forward, and there was quite a bit of them. And so it really shows the kind of encouragement, the spirit of, of the uh, commitment that the people have toward their culture and heritage. We have some beautiful costumes right now on stage. Dr. Sobloff, if perhaps you'd like to explain some of them. Yes, these... Uh, so, uh, they These button blankets do their number tonight. weren't made just yesterday or the year before. Many of these pieces have it's really a our heritage to, uh, pieces uh, get up here and have been owned I by realize, uh, members of their clan, and, and they, they kept it I, I, uh, used to for the sake of the, the, the clan. It, it's not but, owned uh, by one member, fun. but by and, the uh, whole clan. So, so some of these pieces that, uh, have been handed down in a traditional manner. Some are very, very old, some are replicas. But generally, some of them are, are quite old and have, have great value. And uh, you would not be wearing any of the robes, either in the Haida group or the Simsian group or the Singit group, unless you were entitled to, to wearing it. You belong to the tribe and the clan, then you may wear it. However, there are a few exceptions in that piece. You can you may wear your grandfather's robe, your grandfather's okay, emblem. Song, this uh, is one of the exceptions. Okay. I, I, uh, I, I made a rough count the other day the as to about how many button blankets or robes there would be Southeast Alaska, and I roughly counted something like between five, six, seven hundred, or a thousand pieces around here beautiful pieces, some Chilkat blankets, <laughs> head, head, head pieces, um, woven, um, woven uh, head pieces as well as the wood and the paraphernalia such as the hand rattles and the, the dancing rod and the big dancing with the batons and so there is a tremendously rich uh, 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 resource of all these pieces of art in the Singit and Haida and Simsian nation. Thank you, Dr. Sobloff. We're being asked to go back to the stage so we can take some of this performance live.
this is the end of our performance. We thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, let me tell you people that this uh, TV is like being broadcasted also. We have people here from all uh, over Southeast Alaska and from uh, British Columbia and from Yukon. TV network. So this is it all over. And uh, again, uh, this girl from uh, Anchorage, where is she? Where is she? Quick, come on. Uh, she still want to uh, have another word with your folk. Yeah. Excuse me, I would like to introduce myself again, Harriet B. Leal from Anchorage, and I guess I went on a 10 minutes before TV time, and so I told Pat Paul, I'd like to make my announcement statewide. And he said, go ahead. And so I would like to announce again that the Cook Inlet Native Association from Anchorage will be hosting their 20th anniversary, June 9th and 10th, and we call it the Spirit Days. We would like to have all the people from Southeast that dance groups that can come up and take part with us in this cultural and spiritual celebration. And I would like to say that we have a, a, also an annual meeting, June 11th, at the Alaska Pacific University. I would like to thank uh, Juno for being a gracious host to me these last three days and the wonderful meals, the beautiful dancing, and the spiritual celebration that the Indian people are famous for. And I would like to thank you. And I would like to say hello to the people in Anchorage, especially my father and Mr. Barry, Frank Barry, the executive director and the board of directors and all the people in Anchorage that are probably watching tonight and my family too. And please come to Anchorage, there's also the Eskimo World Olympics in Fairbanks in August 1st or so, and then the Elders Conference and the AFN in October, which I think I will be coordinating again this year. So I would Mr. Like Kansik? Well, um, what I would like to say to the people this evening, and really to the state of Alaska if I can, we've seen some very exciting performances, a lot of encouragement from our elders, from people participating in Celebration 84. And the thing that I wanted to say is that you know, the culture and the heritage really lies within the soul and the spirit of the native people of Alaska. And we can't wait for grants from, from the National Endowment for the Arts or whatever whatever, to be able to preserve our culture it really is our responsibility and I call all of us to, to work on our culture. It's important, it's rich, we have something to say and I just want to say thank you really to everyone that's participated here. Uh, it's really been the people's, people's show, if you please, and it's been very, very encouraging. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Katzik. I'm going to talk uh, my own language. And if you don't understand me, it's not my fault, it's your fault. Well, Jagai, Askot Kaste Kuoe, Astu Tioa, ye dead. Hashakun Ganasaus, me. Hastuk touch Hanikian Ka Hastuina Kao Haya Asa Ustu Koste Ay that Triai that Hatini. Okay, Tom, what what is being said uh, downstairs with the cake dance? Uh, the man that's speaking is Arthur Johnson, Sr., a retired reverend, and he is talking about the way the old people used to uh, do this type of gathering, how they conduct it, uh, what community house the story is going to be told. And so that might everybody do come there. They never used to write any of our stories. Nothing was put on paper. 
And how, how long is it? How long has it been? There, I, it's my understanding there was a, a long period of time when these types of gathering and speaking um, in the native tongue, whether it was Klingit, Haida, or Simshian, just wasn't allowed. E even some of the elders were reluctant to allow children to speak in the native tongue. I'd say I think it, it, it really started from just a little before my t uh, the time that I started school. When I started, I started real late, about 11 years or 12 years old, and I didn't understand a thing about English, but it must have been about maybe eight years before that time or more when they didn't allow us to speak or think the language. So when I started school, yeah, they really got strict with us completely cut us out from talking our own language on the, around the school. So it was out of bounds. So um, do you think that celebrations like this uh, really do revive the language? Or are there a lot of people here just listening and enjoying the sound of the language but not understanding at all? I'd say yes to what you said. Uh, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry that most of it is going over the heads of the group that's down there now. What's the what's the main message? Uh, do you think that that um, your group uh, from Cake and, and others want to get across here at Celebration 84? Well, I'd, I'd say unity is uh, the word we want to, and I think uh, the the group from uh, Hawaii really have helped us to woven the relationship among the Tlingkids, the Haidas, and the Simsians. The, the uh, Hawaiian group really done a good job with us. So an outside group has come in and, and helped show you the way to That's right. strengthen your That's own right. nations. That's right. You know, that, that do always happen. Uh, even when we visit each other in different communities, it makes the, the community come to life, you know. Uh, that way, when they hear now, cake is coming to Angoon, the community is going to start cleaning up their grounds and everything. We do the same thing too, you know. And homes are going to go and the families are happy, you know, and excited because this group is going to come into town. We're going to, um, Tom, go back uh, down to the, um, the floor and see what's happening down there. Thanks, Tom. Mm -hmm. Right now, Dr. Kalani Kaini from Honolulu, Hawaii, who has been here for the last three days. I'm going to let Dr. Soboloff and Dr. Marty kind of compare notes here, if you will. Uh, Dr. Kalani, uh, is there any comparison from Celebration 82 and also Celebration 84? Tell us something about your reaction in each case. Well, I find both of them very thrilling, dazzling to an outsider like myself. And I've, I've been impressed both times, in 82 and this year in 84, with, with the deep sense of pride and heritage, of course, the uh, reinforcement of the spirit of unity, and uh, the viability, the, the vigorousness of uh, uh, the culture. It's just thrilling, and it's... Uh, I, I'm at a loss for adjectives, but it's, it's very rewarding for me to be here as an outsider. I've just gotten a cue that we should go back to the stage for just a few more minutes, so we will come back to you in a minute.
Dr. Sobolov. We'd like to have you tell us a little bit about the dance. Beg hmm. pardon? Okay, tell us a little bit about the dance. This is the, this is the Huna group coming on. We have come out to, see, to, to share with you, but there aren't too many of us. This, however, is the is the cake group, and they're joined by the Huna group. This is out of a sense of gratitude to all of you, and we thank you for including us for this occasion. We really are not familiar with some of these things as most of you are. And here as we and as we have watched you, our dear people, we will bring back to cake to the population of cake the pride and the beauty and the poise with which you have accomplished these things from Angun and Huna and Yakutat from Ketchkan the Simsian folk from Chilkat Sitka Saxman Thank you uh, this is our attitude to you, all of you, our relatives. You, you, showed, you showed us our life, our traditions. We thought it was drifting out to sea. And, and, and it, it's here yet. It isn't, it isn't far away. Thank you. We, we are not here to to do a marvelous, dan marvelous dance before you, but, but we came out for you just to be seen. Kelly James from Cake. A man whose name is Shash Ani, Kelly James. I see the people. Wilbur Brown. Shakit Elsie Austin. Betty James. Alice Dugokwa. Mona Cakes Haida. Cut, cut. Chester James, our grandfather, over here. You've met Arthur Johnson, the elder in our family is Tommy Jackson, the elder in our tribe is Jimmy George, down here. Our children, Martha Shields, our grandchild, her daughter, our wife, Lydia George. Uh, I'm pleased to introduce to you at this time Vesta, Mrs. Vesta Johnson of the Hyde Nation. She has been very active in um, promoting or encouraging the various traditions of the Haida folk. We'd like to say, have you say a few words, Vesta. Walter, I'm very uh, excited and pleased to be here. We've learned a lot from the Clinkett Nation and the Simshian Nation and, and uh, the unity of the people and the love that's shown to one another has been very encouraging and beautiful that's one of the values that our people have is uh, working in unity and respect for each other and uh, this this has been wonderful um, it's it's history in the making for our young people our grandchildren 
something that we could hand down to them. I'd like to see our children, our future children, uh, learn the values of their culture because the, clink, uh, the Indian culture is very beautiful and uh, also the, the, the respect that they have, they used to have for the elders, respect and responsibility. And I thank you, Walter. And we will share it with our people. We will share thank with you, them Randy, Russia, that our culture is truly still standing like Mount St. Elias. It's truly standing like the elderly people that we have and we greatly appreciate having had an opportunity to be amongst you and to witness this great friendship and fellowship. Fellowship in the Tlingit heritage, the Haida heritage, and the Simpsian heritage. We thank you once again, and now we will perform one song, and then we will let someone else take the stage here. Hakuk. We're going to dance to a love song. We borrowed expert musicians from Huna, Saxman, Juno. I wouldn't be surprised if there's one from Bellingham in the crowd. Hakuk.
what's happening here? Right now, they're, they're doing the finale of, of their dance before the, the whole group comes up. And, and this is still cake that we're watching? That's right. Mm -hmm. Why is everyone uh, lined up in kind of that semicircle like that? They're, they always give each other the opportunity to be seen from the from the audience, each in the in, in individual dancer. Does this dance belong only to Cake, or is this a dance that's shared by, by shared, other villages? It's shared by other villages. And there's quite a few in there that are originally from Cake, but living in other communities. So they came up to help out. And then we also have our, our children from the killer whale side who came up there to give us a hand. That's why we have that many up here so, now. So they, the, the children of, of the other clans can come up and, and help as well? Then. That's right. That's right. What? Uh, They're supposed to have stayed up there. And so now they're going to take a little bit of an early um, exit, it appears. You'll have to talk to the cake folk when you get back to them right. uh, about their, their dancing. Is this a traditional exit dance, or is this something uh, that uh, yeah, we might yeah. see only from cake uh -huh. as well? I, I've noticed that dances like the entrance and exit dance uh, seem to be shared across the state. That's right. That's right. I can hear that applause. It seems people were very pleased with what they saw from the cake crew. That, I think this was quite unexpected because, to me also, because we didn't think we, I didn't think that we'd have that many, you know, but then that sure helps. That's, when That's what's good about it. our community, community people, you know. They help each other out. As, as some supporters. Let's talk about what uh, we might expect in the finale that's coming up, Tom. Tell me about that. Well, as far as I know, the finale would be, will pick in the singing and dancing a little bit. To wind it. Uh, that's about all I know about. Well, we are certainly looking forward to seeing everyone as they come up on stage and, and uh, fill this auditorium here this evening. I believe there's some activity that's going to go on the floor. Let's listen and see what uh, he's saying. Dr. Sokoff is going to be here about the people that she brought to Celebration 84. Arlene Bui, we're pleased to have you at Celebration 84. How many of the elderly folk uh, did you bring along this year? Uh, we brought um, six from Clorock, six elders from Clorock, two from Seattle, and two from Ketchikan. Uh, I'd like to thank our corporation, Clorockenia Corporation, for bringing our elders here. Uh, they've been very generous, very kind. Uh, they're, they're enjoying this um, celebration very much. Uh, Clorock. Uh, Clinkett, Clinkett um, Eagle and the Raven Tribes certainly salute what's been going on here tonight. To see these children as they're going on stage, uh, the Haida, the Clinkett, and the Simpson Nations of Alaska, and those that are statewide, we have a lot to be proud of in our heritage and our culture. Although the walk's not going on stage tonight. We'd like to stress that we haven't in no way lost our culture. We do our beadwork, we do our blanket making, and our future is Celebration 86, and look at the wonderful dance going on. I think we should go back upstairs right now and we're into the finale. Stay to say goodbye during the finale or after the finale or if he's just going to take it out. Thank you. 
goodbye. So I'm going to tell you thank you for the crew at HO TV in general. Thank you for my son, John Williams, Rosie Alexander on the floor down there with those wild people, Dr. Walter Sokoloff. Special thanks to all of those people who helped us interpret the speeches. And as I said, because there's no word for goodbye in Clinkett, I'll just see you again. Tom? Presentation of the Sea Alaska Heritage Foundation. Statewide distribution of Celebration 84 was provided by the Learn Alaska Network. <laughs>